So yesterday I went to the toy store and oh boy was it fun. I felt like eight years old again. So I got me some army tanks and this neat helicopter. But when I came back at the studio... Really, Jordy? How old are you? Yannick the party pooper was there. I had to buy grown-up toys. You know those plastic animals only your grandma has in her cabinet? But I have to admit, they look pretty cool. And what if there's a way to put these into Unreal Engine and bring them to life? Only problem, elephants don't have USB ports. And before you ask, yes, I tried putting them into my computer. Doesn't work. Oh, be right back. So, the mailman brought me a suitcase. Let's see what's inside. Well, 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 isn't that convenient? It's a 3D scanner. What a coincidence. <laughs> this here is the Mole, a brand new scanner from 3D Maker Pro. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. And it comes with the scanner itself, also a tripod, so that you can put the scanner onto a stand. And it also comes with a turntable, so that you can scan your objects while it automatically rotates around and you don't have to do a thing. Now, more information about this 3D scanner can be found in the description down below. And Lorenzo is gonna show you how it's done. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on my Unreal Engine scene. The scanning process is easy and straightforward. To start off, you can pick between Easy Scan, where you have to manually move around the scanner, or Table Scan, where the object gets turned around on the turntable. In our case, we'll go for a Table Scan. And then it's time to select an object that you want to scan. The mole scanner is made for medium to small sized objects. Going for small miniatures like this or objects bigger than the turntable aren't recommended for the best possible results. Next to this, also pay attention to the material of your object. Bright reflective surfaces, transparent objects and deep blacks are hard to pick up. So, when working with those materials, spray something like dry shampoo on top. This way you can make those surfaces more visible for the scanner, resulting in the best scan possible. I'm going to pick this elephant and place it on top of the turntable. Inside the software I can now press preview. Adjust the scanner angle and distance to frame up the object as good as possible. Using the distance meter on the left we know if we are too far or too close from it. On the right of the screen we can find some settings. The importance here are the brightness slider. This you want as high as possible without having this red color on your object, indicating that it's too bright. And the geometry and texture toggle. Geometry delivers the best results, while texture will create a texture of your object while scanning. We'll be using both of these but first we start off with geometry. Once everything is set up and ready to be scanned, remove the object from the turntable and press initial. This step will scan the turntable only. Once that scan is finished, you can place the object back and press scan. Let it run and once it's done, you'll see a preview of what the scanner was able to pick up. To get the best result, it's good to scan your object from different angles. So flip it around and press append. And repeat this process until you have scanned your object from all possible sides. But before we use this data, we need to capture the texture too. Go back to table scan and here, change the setting from geometry to texture and press scan. From experience you don't need as many angles for the texture as we did for the geometry. Two or three should do the job depending on the complexity of your object. Now do keep in mind that this scanner has a black and white camera. If you want color you need the color kit or you have to recolor the black and white texture yourself. But there's an easy way to do that and we'll show you later on. By now we should have all these scans so it's time to combine them. On the bottom right make all the different scans visible. Then on top we drag our first scan into this box. Currently the viewport looks like a mess but once we click align, their AI will automatically line up everything. It does a really good job, but if you're not satisfied with the outcome, you can always go into menu alignment to adjust. If we now go over to tools and click delete selection, we remove the turntable from the point cloud. Here you can also see if you might have missed some spots when scanning. If so, you can always add some more scans. Once you're happy with that, it's time to process the model. Here we find a few options. Fusion is going to change the point cloud to an actual model. Remove noise will remove data noise around the object. Repair will fill in the holes that you might have in your scan if you miss some places. And texture mapping will texture the model. Once those are selected, click on process and then apply. And there we go, our 3D object is finished together with its texture. Now, there might be some artifacts on the model like this right here. Simply use the selection tools to select the area and delete it. You can use these tools to clean up the model if needed. Once you're happy, go to file and press export. You get a nice OBG file which you can import directly into Unreal Engine. Now your pivot point is probably not going to be in the middle. So if you hold down the Alt key and then click with your scroll wheel, you can bring it to the right spot. Then right click the elephant, 
choose pivot, set as pivot offset, and that makes it a little bit easier to put the elephant in the right place. Now the elephant looks black and white from the texture as Lorenzo explained, but we can easily colorize it. For that we're going to open up the texture in Photoshop. Then by going to the filter menu and choosing neural filters, we can let Photoshop's AI colorize it. All there's left to do is import this JPEG back into Unreal Engine, double click on the material of the elephant, select the texture sample node, and swap the texture with your color JPEG. Look at that. And now it's just a drag and drop game. From the content browser you can click on ads and then choose add quixel content. You've got an entire library filled with 3D scanned objects free to use. This is great to start building a landscape as you have lots of rocks, cliffs and surfaces to choose from. Now I'm actually gonna go for an arctic scene as I think it's gonna be pretty cool to have elephants walking on the south pole. Kind of like lost elephants and they need to find their way back. Oh, sad story. Anyhow although there are some snowy and ice elements it's not enough to make an arctic scene. So I'm gonna use two plugins. They are paid but absolutely worth it. That's Brushify to easily make an arctic landscape and Ultra Dynamic Sky which also comes with weather effects. And that's gonna make sure that I can create the northern lights or the, the southern because we're on the south pole and the snow. So that was a lot of fun. I just love to drag and drop all the stuff into Unreal and seeing it happen in real time. The fun fact, I don't know anything about 3D. Don't ask me about Blender. I don't even know how to make the default cube. But Unreal is easy and you can get super creative by playing placing different objects around and just looking at what works and what doesn't work. Now as a bonus Lorenzo rigged the elephant in Cinema 4D, don't ask me how we just did, and that allowed me to add a little bit of movement to the elephants. Look at that! Now if you right click the content browser and create a new level sequence, you get a timeline. And we can use that to animate a camera through the scene. So let's add a new cine camera actor. With your playhead at the start, enable keyframe for the position and rotation, and make sure to also enable auto keyframing as well. Now if you go forward in time and then click on perspective, choose your camera actor. You can then pilot it in a scene to a new position and it will automatically create the keyframes for it and animate your camera. Pretty cool right? Now to render this as a movie, simply click on the movie button and you're ready to show it to your friends. Now you can also place yourself inside Unreal Engine which is absolutely amazing and you can learn how to do that in the video here on my left. Thank you so much for watching and as always, stay creative.